Now is, uh, I'm going to introduce our last speaker of this conference, so David Swidel. Is that correct? I'm always I have some uh, kind of shy to pronounce his last name, so but it's good enough, right? So David is an associate professor of marketing at Emory University. David is actually a good friend of mine and uh, with a bright mind and uh, amazing number and statistical skills. In other words, he's a number nerd, <laughs> which is not necessarily a bad thing, because, uh, which made him a world-leading world expert in the statistical analysis in the digital and the social media world. So today, he's going to share one of his uh, exciting work about social media. So please join me in welcoming our last speaker, David Schroeder. Thank, thanks, a, thanks a lot, Yuong. You know, this is the second time I've had a chance to share some of my uh, research um, at the CCI conference, and both times I've been scheduled where I am keeping people from food. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to do my best to um, end things on time. But this, is, this research actually is a continuation of the work I presented the last time that I was here, where we've shown that social media can serve as an early indicator for shifts in, in brand sentiment. What we wanted to look at in this project, though, and this is joint work with my doctoral student, Ning Zhang. Um, what we want to look at was going beyond just the structured metrics, going beyond volume and valence. Let's look at the actual content of what's being said and what can we do with that. So we're going to apply those ideas to the um, context of brands that are experiencing um, crises and see first, can we detect those crises as they're happening? That is, can we develop an early warning system of sorts and be able to provide brands with the indication, hey, something is happening to your brand. Consumers are talking about your brand differently. You potentially need to take some action. If we can detect that, second piece that we're going to look at is, well, what happens after the event occurs? What can we do in terms of the crisis has happened, time is passing, what are people still saying about the brand? How is the crisis affecting us? So what can we learn from social media data? You know, so we, a couple of us were talking about this over dinner yesterday, um, the wonderful perception of airlines. Well, this was the incident itself a couple of weeks ago. but. It wasn't just the incident itself that caused some problems for United. Uh, the response from the CEO was not the best in terms of how it was received by the public. Um, and in, re in reaction to that, there were a couple of folks who um, had some fun um, at his expense. But you know, um, Dave this morning had mentioned Vo uh, Germany potentially being affected by the Volkswagen um, crisis. Well, that's actually the empirical context um, that, I'm gonna, that we're going to look at in this first part of what happens immediately as conversation starts to shift. Can we detect that? And what else starts to happen um, to the brand? Right, so as I said, first part, can we identify the changes in the conversation? Second part, what happens in the aftermath? So crisis detection as well as crisis monitoring. All right, so we use a popular social media monitoring platform, um, Crimson Hexagon, to pull, to pull our data. We pull data relating to the Volkswagen um, scandal around the time of the crisis, about a couple weeks before going to a couple of weeks afterward. And for you know, the practitioners in the room, how many folks are, brands are engaged in some form of social media monitoring? Right, so pretty common practice. Crimson Hexagon, Brandwatch, Sysmos, uh, Salesforce, all of these are great platforms. The challenge with these platforms is that they're really good at doing what they're told to look for. Right, so if I'm Volkswagen, I say look for mentions of Volkswagen, look for people talking about the models. If something is being discussed that I'm not looking for, these monitoring platforms are completely worthless to me. Right, the monitoring platforms are really good at providing you with summary measures and static reports. They're not good at capturing these dynamics and giving us kind of actionable insights. So that's what we wanted to take a look at is can we try to co come up with approaches that could be automated, that could be used by um, brand managers. All right, so, there, so we pull the raw data. There's a lot of pre-processing that, uh, that, that has to be done. So removing uh, punctuation and stop words, stemming, um, focusing on only on those words that appear with sufficiently high prevalence. So that's all the boring pre-processing stuff that has to be done in order to actually do anything. Um, if we look at kind of so, some of the volume measures, well, around the time that it was reported that the EPA um, had discovered Volkswagen was cheating on the emissions, the volume jumps. 
right? uh, tokens being kind of the length, of the number of words that are being used in these posts across the board. So we do see a spike in volume. Right? Well, that's one metric that, that we can look at. But do we see a change in the content of the conversations? All right, so this is, these are word clouds pulled out of Crimson Hexagon, and we can kind of see a clear shift before versus after. Before the crisis happens, before um, the cheating is discovered, we talk about car models, we talk about, I think, some of their competitors, we talk about car parts. Afterwards, a lot of talk about emissions, the leadership of the company, what the fines are going to be, a lot of talk about the, um, the technology behind it. Right, so after the fact, we can look back at this and say, oh, before versus after, clearly there's a shift. But can we detect that shift as quickly as possible? Right, so the approach that we're gonna use is topic modeling. Uh, it's, there's a modeling framework referred to as latent Dirichlet allocation, or LDA. It's been around for going on a decade at this point, borrowed from the computer science literature. And the idea here is that each of these words, each word that's used is associated with the topic, right? And so if words tend to be used together, we're going to assign those words to a particular topic. So for example, in this quote, we, um, based on the analysis, we might have one topic that consists of words such as software, install, reprogram, and hardware. We might think of that as kind of technical details, whereas words such as customer, vehicle, buy, new, car, those are words more that we might associate with uh, a vehicle purchase. So if you're not familiar with topic modeling, think of it as being very similar to factor analysis. We're kind of based on the co-occurrence, these are the words that tend to show up together and we interpret that topic accordingly. All right, well, how do we add the dynamics to this? How do we add the fact that maybe the words being used, maybe the topics being talked about aren't going to be the same throughout time? Early on versus later on, the prevalence with which different words are used, with which different topics are discussed, are going to change. All right, so the innovation in this work was, we're gonna borrow from some of the CRM literature the idea of a change point. Right, so this is very commonly used for customer valuation, where if we see customers making purchases over time and we wanna figure out are they still active in terms of their relationship, we're gonna assume that they have a buying process and we're gonna assume that there's a death process, a churn process, but we don't know when anything happens. So we look for the data. Well, what's the data show us? Customers arrive, and maybe at some point in time, <laughs> customers die. Well, we have to make an inference based on what we observe, right? Early on, we observe they're making purchases. All right, chances are the customers are still active. In this time after, with no purchases, we again have to make an inference. How likely is it that the same process from before still holds? So that's the idea with the latent change point. We're gonna take that late and change point idea, incorporate it into the text analysis. All right, so if we have comments coming in before in a, a change point, we have one set of topic proportions. After the change point, we might have a different set of topic proportions. So focus on purchasing, very prevalent before. After this event happens, and again, we don't know when that event happened, but afterwards, we might have a very low prevalence of the words associated with purchase. Before, the words associated with the scandal, such as emissions or diesel, might not be used that frequently. Afterwards, they might be used very frequently. So that's the way that we're going to detect this change point. All right, well, turns out that we can detect that change point um, very accurately, almost 100% probability puts the day of the change point as the day of the EPA news release. But the more interesting part on it is, what happens to the topic prevalence? Well, on the top graph, we have the topics that experience the biggest increase um, in prevalence. So talk about the leadership, the CEO, talk about the EPA, the magnitude of the fine. Those are the ones that experience the biggest increase in the prevalence. What, which kinds of words or topics experience the biggest decrease? Well, talk about car parts. Um, the one that, uh, conversation around purchasing, the one that I, I thought was the more interesting though was this idea of kind of family related words. So words like children, wife, um, weekend activities, fun, 
those words also experience lower prevalence after the um, emissions crisis. So we see not, where is it that the, the share of conversation is coming from? Right? People are talking about the crisis, they're talking about the scandal itself. Well, these are the topics that it's stealing that share from. Right? So people are not associating um, Volkswagen with those family activities anymore. And, you know, from a um, branding standpoint, that might be problematic, especially if your advertising is intended to promote that particular um, association. Uh, the other analysis that we had done, though, was to say, well, could this be implemented in real time? So what we had done was say, let's take a seven-day window, and we're going to move that seven-day window one day forward, one day at a time. And what we want to find out is how quickly do we detect shifts in the conversation? So the solid bars here indicate that on that particular day, the first time that day appears in our rolling window, we identify a change point. The height of the bar is how many days in that seven-day window is a change point identified on those days. You see three bars that kind of rise to the top. Uh, first one is when the crisis, when the announcement came out um, from the EPA. Second bar being Volkswagen admitting what had happened, and then the recall announcement being the third bar. So a little bit of of validity that we are picking up actual events as they're happening. Now, the data we have daily is about as granular as we can go, but from an implementation standpoint, no reason that something like this couldn't be implemented on a more granular basis, be it hourly or every half hour, just depends on the volume of conversation that's happening. All right, um, I've got a couple of minutes. I'm gonna to try to wrap up and keep us on time so that we can all grab lunch, but all right, crisis has happened. Well, what, what, what about the aftermath? So the context we use for this data that we've pulled is data from The Honest Company. Um, anyone with small children is probably familiar with their line of eco-friendly, um, no, no artificial chemicals, all your products are safe. Well, there was a Wall Street Journal report that said, turns out that one of the products, that, or one of the chemicals they said they would never use is in one of their products. Um, so there was a slight fallout from that on social. You can see the spikes in volume happen right around the time of that incident. And then it looks like volume pretty much goes back to normal. All right, so if you were to just look at volume, you might say, okay, well, the crisis has passed. Things, are, things have calmed down. Well, what about the content? All right, um, Shao's done some great work that looked at combining structured and unstructured metrics um, from social media, and that's what we're doing here. We're gonna, say, we're, we're gonna look at volume, but we also wanna look at content and see do, does the impact persist over time? Um, fancy equation, ignore the equation, it's used to produce the graph below. Um, what, we set, what we assume is a very flexible way of parametrizing the impact of the negative news. It could be a spike that comes back down very quickly, it could be a very slow build that persists over time. Bottom line is we wanted a functional form that would capture all of these different shapes. So that's what we used. Right. Well, in terms of the impact on volume that we estimate, we see it takes about 12 hours um, for that max for that spike to happen because I think the uh, report was released in the evening, and then it returns slightly below baseline level. So volume quick spike drops back down relatively quickly. What about the topics that were identified, the content of what people were saying? Well, the most prevalent topics, these are um, the five most prevalent topics uh, that we identified after the crisis. Uh, one, the, first, the, the top two relate directly to the Wall Street Journal report. Um, so conversation about the report and the company's denial of wrongdoing spike relatively quickly, but you can see those top two curves, they persist for two weeks. So volume returned to normal almost immediately. Conversation shift still persists. While those two topics are being discussed, what's not being discussed? It's topics related to your products, it's topics related to promotional activity. So even though volume is back to normal, your, your high level metrics might look okay, the impact of the, uh, of the product crisis you had is persisting for at least a couple of weeks. Right, and then you know, just to summarize, so not, everything is moving in the same direction, right? Volume, quick spike, content, you know, what people are talking about, that's the enduring effect. And it may point to, it's something that we can't test in this research, it may point to a fact that different customers are engaging in the conversation. So perhaps before where it was only your loyal customers who were engaging in the conversation, well that might have shifted. Maybe some of those loyal customers dropped out of the conversation and people who are more focused on the crisis entered the conversation. 
All right, so just you know, overall, the, what these two projects are indicating to us is there's a lot that we can do with social data. It's not just kind of the structured data, the volume, the valence, the, order, the ratings data. That's not enough. We've got to dig into the content, and text is the tip of the iceberg. A lot of companies right now focused on image and video um, analytics to try to incorporate that, other ways in which customers um, are engaging. You know, we've talked about actively monitoring. You know, just looking at the, those high-level summaries, not enough. We really need to dig into those content um, changes, and both before and after crisis, it looks like we can learn about what's on the minds of consumers uh, through what they're saying on social media. And I'm back on time. Thank you for sticking around for the whole conference. Right. Yeah. Can you, um, um, can you explain a little bit how finely or broadly you define the topics? Do they have to be defined? So we've run um, large number of topics. One of the downsides with these topic models is that you end up with a huge number of topics. I think in both of these cases, we've got like 40 or 50 topics, but most of them are very low share. Um, smaller topics obviously is gonna be much more manageable to deal with, um, and so I, I think you know, the model itself, we kind of run with a broad range of topics, but the, we, where the emphasis is, is going to be on those topics that are the most prevalent. Any more questions? Then, yeah. How do you know which words to focus on? Other than leadership, So we made no, so one of the things I like about this modeling framework is we made no assumptions about what words to focus on. So we just said, pull for us words about Volkswagen. Like any, any post that mentions Volkswagen and all of the other words um, and the associations that's all being inferred based on the, da based on the data that we're provided with. So if you come up with some good words to bad words, then you know, hey, there's gonna be a person. Exactly, and that's where it's, this is not a replacement for a human being, right? This is an aid for a person. Say, the conversation has changed. I can tell you it went from this topic to this topic. We still need someone to tell us, is that a good thing, or is it a bad thing, or is it something we don't need to pay attention to? You know, we work with a lot of, of, of companies that are local, so a large beverage manufacturer pays a lot of attention, um, to, uh, pays a lot of attention to social, but again, what they're doing is only as good as the monitors, kind of the queries that they set up, and they have to make choices about those words. So if those words are used, it gets picked up. If a different set of words get used, they're gonna be blind to that conversation. So I think as few restrictions as you put on those social monitors, the better. Okay, so no more. So thank you very much. Uh, excellent. Thank you.